Ladies and gentlemen, today is May 10, 2016, and this is The Kane Kale Show, episode 292, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and today we are going to be doing an episode on creating the latest and greatest piece, the Farah promo art for the 21 Days of Overwatch on DeviantArt.com. And if you're curious what the heck that is, then just click the link in the description. DeviantArt and Blizzard commissioned a bunch of awesome artists, so you can take a look at them for yourself. Right now, I think we're on day uh, nine. Right? And, oh, hey, I like that. That's a good day. Um, and tomorrow, see, look, Dan Levisi. And, and all, all these other awesome artists that I have looked up to my entire life, DeviantArt and Blizzard contacted us to, well, them, and I just so happened to, like, kind of straggle along and get in there somehow. And uh, I created a piece of Farah. So today we're going to be talking about the creation of that, the process of that. And we're going to be having some fun with that. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll up. The lovely lane because you guys have been being awesome and submitting your art. So if you'd like to go take a look at all these for yourself and just type in that tiny URL slash KNKL fan art. Go like the page, submit your art. That could be you passing by right there. That could be you. Get featured on the show. And of course, most important part, come get some cookies. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of a story. A little bit of a story for you. And the story begins with sketches. It begins with sketches, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be going into a time lapse, and I'm going to be stopping every once in a while and kind of talking about a couple things, okay? Because we eventually want to get to this right here, right? Everybody sees this, and they're like, wow, isn't that great? Isn't that amazing? All oh, the colors, all oh, the, the, the blur. Oh, man, it's like, it's like all these simple things that are actually not that um, complicated to do. But when you put them all together, right, lots of little tiny things adding up to make an amazing piece. And I'm going to tell you guys about each of those tricks. I'm going to walk you through. I'm going to hold your hand as we walk this path to create fair. And uh, even though this looks nice, it does not start like that. It starts like this. It's, or more uh, importantly, it starts probably like this right here. It starts like a very simple, simple sketch. And uh, we're going to go ahead and be talking about that. As well as some other possible compositions that never made it. A couple of compositions that never made it to the final showdown. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started with that. Starting on the good old time lapse. And the first thing that I want to tell you guys about is my current process for creating pictures. And if you guys have not um, tried this out for yourself, then I would highly recommend that you do it. And that is thumbnails. You would not believe how, like, I was so against thumbnailing when I first started um, like working as a professional because I was like, no, like I got the vision in my head. Like I got the perfect vision of what this is going to be. I don't need a thumbnail. Just give me that blank canvas. I'll start drawing everything right on there. It's going to be perfect right from the beginning, right? And it just didn't, you know, to my surprise, it didn't work out that way most of the time. So then um, my coworkers, luckily they were more stubborn than I was and they kept bugging me, kept bugging me to do thumbnails, do thumbnails and try out a bunch of different ideas at first. And eventually I wound up getting into it and finding out, whoa, hey, this is actually a huge benefit. Not only does this help me get a bunch of ideas out, right? But all those ideas that I thought were good, once you put them onto the canvas, sometimes they don't work out as well as you were hoping. Or sometimes the, uh, the character that comes through or the message that comes through isn't the exact feeling that you wanted. And, um, and doing thumbnails really helps for you to kind of get those ideas that you think will work but don't actually work out of the way. That way new ideas can come in, new ideas can come in. Um, a really cool sort of a, I mean, it's kind of a philosophical thing, but I believe that you can't have more ideas until you get the ideas that are currently in your head out. So um, putting them on a canvas, writing them down, get all those, get as many ideas out of your head because nature abhors a vacuum and it will fill your head with more ideas once you get them out of there. So if you ever feel like you're kind of getting stuck in that art block stage, you ever feel like you're getting kind of stuck on your piece, um, thumbnails really helps. Or if it's late at night, you can't, like I always get really good ideas like right before I'm about to conk out. And um, yeah, so just writing those things down can help a lot too. Uh, and that's why I say, hey, keep a journal. Keep a journal right here. Don't, don't read my journal, it's for me only. Me only. Okay, so anyway, I'm totally blabbing while we are going through this. Okay, so uh, you guys can see that we went through a bunch of different iterations here. Like, let's go ahead and jump back to this. So a couple of the things that we jumped through or a couple of different iterations of things that we threw down was say like this one here where it's like, hey, this is more of like a pulled back shot of Farrah and we can see like her sexy body and the cool mech suit and all that stuff. And uh, that one was cool. 
I liked it, but my original idea for this piece was I'm always a big fan of, you know, because I, I think it's probably just because working at League of Legends is just doing splashes rubbed off on me. Uh, I really like the way that they have the camera very close to the characters, so it makes you feel like you're right there with them. It has like these really exaggerated like angles in it. And like, say like uh, this character, I mean, see right here, like your elbow is facing right at you. And because it's like so foreshortened and like in your face, it makes you feel like you're very close to the character. So, um, but having the camera pulled out this far as in this top right piece, or I actually ended up refining it a little bit, we'll go into that in just a moment, on this left piece, just didn't have quite the same amount of power to it. Didn't have that that same feeling that I was looking for, that same feeling of you being there with the character. So let's go ahead and get back into this. And um, originally, so this is the point where I finally started getting to a point where I was like, okay, I think this is going to work. I think this is what I want to do. Definitely want to have the, this sort of like this profile of Farrah, but then not only is there a profile, but we have turned the camera a little bit, so now we're looking up at her, right? And you might ask Keenan, how the heck do you know how to draw somebody from that angle, right? Well, that's where having a cell phone comes in handy because look at this awesome reference picture that we have right here. In fact, you can't even tell the difference. I just basically did a self-portrait and then put Farrah's armor on top of me because as you can see, I have such an attractive face, an attractive female, beautiful face. I just took the facial hair off, obviously. And yeah, I just drew myself. But yeah, um, having a cell phone for that really, really helps. So you just kind of take that picture of yourself, kind of turn your head a little bit, and then you can see like little, little key uh, details such as, hey, how the ear meets up with your jawline and how this interesting um, area beneath your neck works, right? And how it connects to your chin. All that stuff is pretty tough to draw. In fact, I would say drawing anything from this angle, if it's a person, is one of the hardest things that you can do. So use those phones. I know you got them. Use those phones. Uh, or even better, use a webcam. Okay, where the heck is this? I totally rearranged all my buttons rearranged all my buttons on XSplit, so it's totally throwing me off. Okay, and then we're getting into, now we have blown everything up. Now that we've created a thumbnail, that we can say, yes, that is what I want, that is the feeling I'm going for, now we can blow up that thumbnail, blow up the thumbnail, fill the canvas, and begin going into refinement, refinement. And you might be wondering, why am I working in just black and white? Or, the final piece had colors, and yet there are no colors added onto it yet. That's because we're going to be doing a technique called sketch lifting, which is where you paint everything black and white first. And then I'm going to teach you guys in a later episode, but I've also done another episode on it in the past. And if you want to see that episode, then just go ahead and click on the picture right now. It'll take you back to an older episode where we talk about sketch lifting, where you paint everything in black and white and you lift it off and then you can add colors behind it. And then we go and then we color the lines and put over paints on it and all that stuff. But anyway, yeah, you can go check out that episode if you click there. All right, but right now we are just focusing on blacks and whites. Blacks and whites, values, getting a good feeling for what we want with this picture. And um, I, I actually have been going back and forth on how I actually like to lay out these types of pictures. Because um, even though we can paint everything in black and white and then sketch lift it, sometimes we do run into some issues and we're gonna get into that also in a future episode and possible solutions that I found to uh, getting a bit more of a true color value in there. Okay, but regardless, okay, so check this out. So I took a break and I said, hey, maybe I should revisit that old thumbnail because maybe this one is a little bit too close. Maybe that current composition was too close and we're not seeing enough of Farrah. Um, because an important thing is, is that you ask yourself, what actually is this character? What are the defining features of this character? And for me, uh, with Farrah, it is her mech suit, right? And we wanna, and more importantly, more importantly than just the suit, the giant wings that stick off the back. So I felt like in our old composition, we were seeing a little bit of the wing, but not quite enough. I felt like we could maybe showcase it here a little bit more uh, while also showing off more of the body. Just trying it out, just trying it out. But notice how I'm just working in black and white, black and white. All right, hmm. Uh, oh, and I totally forgot about this. Totally forgot to say this. Um, we do have a question that came in from the Kankale Imsy from Sang Create, and this is why, this is basically what we're tackling on today's show. So let's go ahead and uh, read over this question. 
SimCreate asks, I'm a Photoshop user, but when I want to draw a character, I always start with a sketch. Problem is I use a lot of layers, a lot of layers to create many, many different types of sketches. And then at the end, there's like six or seven layers. How do you figure out how to kind of keep it all organized, right? Is what I'm getting, right? Or how do you improve your drawing skill without using a lot of layers? And my best advice for you saying, my best advice for you saying is this, is actually that it's not bad. It's not bad to use a lot of layers on your sketch because right now what we're doing is we are working right here. And let me go ahead and zoom out the camera so you guys can take a look at each of these um, layers for yourself. And also you, you can actually download this at the end of the episode. I will have uh, instructions on how you can do that. And, but take a look at this. So um, there's a bunch of sketches in here that I'm using to paint over. What, is that actually changing anything? Wait, why is that not changing anything? What the heck? Oh, whoops, I'm on the wrong thing. Well, let's make sure you have the right folder up, but look at all these layers that actually comprise this sketch layer or this layout. And it's not necessarily bad. In fact, I would recommend that you do it this way. I would recommend that as you are changing things throughout your drawing, that you actually do use a lot of layers. And here's why. Because oftentimes, and this is actually gonna come into play a little bit later. So I want you to pay very close attention to this face right here, this face. Even though it's very rough and sketchy, you'd be surprised at how often you're able to capture greatness in these early sketching stages. And then as you refine things, sometimes you'll tend to lose a little bit of that character. You'll tend to lose more so like the feeling that you had when you look at something. So take a look at this. Each of these layers, as you place them on top, it's changing things, but then I'll always turn them off and on, off and on. And then I'll ask myself, am I changing this character too much? Or am I changing the feeling that was originally there? Even something as simple as this. See how like I've added a little bit more of that cheek in there to cover the eye? I wanna make sure that that's not changing the original feeling that was there, right? And then over here, adding the wings on. Is that changing the silhouette too much? No, not necessarily, that looks good. Adding a little bit more uh, values in here and then adding in uh, some more refinements. I actually personally really like to do it this way, saying. So, uh, but this is more so for like painting and values. Um, as far as like sketching with just line art, that may be another thing. That may be another um, question or another thing that we could devote an entire daily to. But uh, in the meantime, I would say that don't be afraid of using layers. That's what Photoshop's for. So let's go ahead and continue. Continue here. Alrighty then. So let's move on to the next part where we are going to be refining this next thing. The next part. The next part. All right, so I took another break Took another break between these two things. And uh, you can see over here, take a look over here. Oh, let me go ahead and zoom in so we don't have the rest of that uh, Windows Media Player shown. So if you look over here, look at all these layers and then notice every now and then I'll add a new one. I'll add a new one on top and I'll begin making more adjustments and refinements. And here I am, oh, actually there's something really cool right there. Um, right here what I'm doing is I'm messing around in the liquify tool because I wanted to create an illusion of uh, or like the gas distortion, right? Or like the, the heat wave distortion that's coming out of her jetpack. And so I went into liquify and kind of played around with it a little bit to kind of distort the air around it. Just as a note for later uh, that I wanted to do something like that. And it's really fun to go into liquify and try those things out. And I'll actually show you guys how to do that before we go. Um, the end effect that I ended up using was not liquify. It was another thing and I can't remember exactly which one it is right now, but that's okay because we're gonna get into that stuff later. Getting way ahead of way ahead of ourselves, okay? Let's get into the next fun part, okay? So I got a little bit of feedback from DeviantArt um, and they asked that I actually pull the camera back a little bit. And of course I was like, oh no, no, I want the camera to be as close as possible, right? I don't want it to ruin the composition. But they're like, no, we actually really need like the waist to be showing and at least the top of the gun to be showing because we're gonna be using it for like a collage thing or I forget exactly what they said, but um, they just needed the full character, right? Nothing to be cut off, right? And currently like her gun was sticking off and kind of getting cut off. So I was like, okay, fine. But the biggest reason why I didn't want to pull out the camera was because it was so much easier to kind of get away with, <laughs> I feel bad for saying this, but it's, it's a little easier to get away with a bad perspective on the gun. Whereas if you show the whole gun, then it has to be in perfect perspective. So that leads into the next part of the time lapse. Hey, isn't this awesome? We're gonna be doing the Splatoon stuff, or basically what I taught you guys back with the Splatoon piece, 
where we are going to um, lower the opacity on everything that we've worked on thus far. And we're going to begin sculpting in shape by shape our actual, our geometric shapes. And this is really handy for man-made objects such as guns, weapons, cars, mechs. And it's very important that you lay this stuff out separately. Don't try to paint it in and just kind of eyeball it. You must use the perspective tricks that I taught you guys back in the episode of Splatoon. And if you're curious about how to do that, then just go ahead and click right here. And it'll take you back to the episode where we talked about laying out weapons and things in perspective. And you guys will have a good time with that. All righty. So, yeah, but this is basically just because we pulled out the camera. Got to have that proper perspective. Really was hoping I could avoid this, but hey, you know, it's like when it was all done, I was like, okay, I'm glad that I did that. It does actually look really nice. But uh, it's just a lot of work. It's just a lot of extra work. It takes work to make it look right, okay? So, and it's still pretty sketchy at this point, but it's so much better than trying to just eyeball it. So much better than trying to eyeball it. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. I think that is where we're going to end it. That is where we're going to end it. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. So that is going to end part one of the Farrah piece. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And go back and check out those episodes if you're curious about everything that brought us up to this point. Um, before we go, oh yeah, totally forgot about this. The most important part is that if you want to get a look at this PSD for yourself and you can kind of click on and off all these layers and check out all these sketches, then just go ahead and click on this picture right here. It'll take you over to the Patreon. You can go ahead and support the show and uh, sponsor it and all those other kind of cool things. Uh, yeah, and download PSDs. That's the most important part. Not only this PSD, but all the other PSDs from the past. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and end it. But before we go, one last thing. we got to say thank you to our amazing sponsor. Thank you, Laura Bashir, Cody Turner, David Chiariello, and my latest sponsors, Ian Crowell, Megan Gwynn, Matthias Silver, and Infinite Scribbles. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show as well as my sponsors of the past. It would not be the same without you. And uh, yes, this is also something that you can do on Patreon as well. So if that interests you, then go check it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's going to go ahead and end it. Thumbs up if you like, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.